I'm Emily Eman here for the Big Ten Network. There's been a few changes to the Big Ten volleyball personnel over the last few months, and I am with our newest addition. I am so excited to introduce Leah Johnson, the new head coach of Michigan State Volleyball. I am so excited for a Big Ten family to get to know you a little bit more. I know you said it's your first week or two on the job. How are you settling in? It's been nice. You know, everyone's been very warm and welcoming. And I mean, that's part of the reason I thought this was a great fit for me because it's such a family culture. And um, I kind of live my my job and my family are so blended that I, I wanted that. So it's been awesome. What drew you into Michigan State? Uh, first, it was Alan, our AD, Alan Haller, and, and he's just such a kind person, um, a man of integrity, also has such a big vision and wants input. You know, it's not just his show. He wants to make sure that I'm part of the plan and part of the future and, and we're working kind of lockstep together. So that was huge. But uh, I also think the potential of Michigan State to rise to the ranks in the Big Ten is, is there. So I wanted to go for it. When you met some of those players for the first time, how was that first impression? Yeah, they were very gracious you know, and, and very kind. Our first interaction, it was literally a group hug and just happened very spontaneous. Um, it, it was meant to be. It was meant to be and a lot of laughs, uh, a lot of smiles. And I think just, you know, my, my kids were there too. And so they add some levity to every situation, whether they know it or not. And it was, it was great. It felt like family. What was the first thing you noticed about Michigan State's campus as for the first mm -hmm. time that you came? Yeah, well, it's huge. Um, I think it has so much green. I know right now it's covered in snow, but the, the, the scenery, the landscape, the buildings, like there is just such a vibe here of this huge collegiate experience that's bigger than life, right? Like when you picture that in the movies, that this is what you see. And so I loved stepping into that feel. Now that you've had, you know, a week or so of practice under your belt, how would you say your players might describe your coaching style? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they would describe it as very intentional. You know, I think fairly positive. You know, we're, I'm not big on a lot of judgment or overcorrection. I want them to get the cues, work through it, take feedback when they're ready to receive it. And so uh, it, pretty paced and intentional, I would say. And I make fun of myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh at yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I hear you talk a lot about culture and how important that is to a program and building that up first, especially when you're, you know, building up a program. So how yeah. would you describe your ideal culture for Michigan State Volleyball? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think you got to be consistent. You know, I can be super energetic or I can be very mellow as long as I'm that same person all the time. And so I try to be very consistent in my personality so that the team knows who they're going to get. Doesn't mean we can't have great days or bad days. I mean, that's all real life, but I want to be the most consistent person in the room. I want to stabilize the environment so that that way, as we go through ebbs and flows, um, I'm not unpredictable, you know, and we can focus on our progress. I think the other thing is just being very intentional on how you develop relationships. I think there's this assumption that um, you just know people or over time it'll happen or it's natural and organic, but I'm, I'm very intentional with that. I mean, I meet with my players every couple of weeks, one-on-one -on -one for as long as they want. And, you know, we really dig in and share and be vulnerable and be excited for each other. And, and I, I can tell when I've gotten there because I, they start asking about me and about my family and about what I want to do over spring break, you know, and I'm like, well, I work, but <laughs> thanks for asking. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's one of the reasons why Michigan State wanted you is because you do always have such a good relationship with your players and your, your coaching staff and everyone in the athletic department. How have you gotten to know your players so far? Yeah, so that was my first week. I barely stepped in the gym. I actually told them to run their own open gyms that first week. So we're still in eight hours, so it's not a significant amount of time. And I just went in and watched and kind of uh, got a sense of personality, you know, and a sense of how they interact together, what they believe their work ethic standard to be and got a pulse on that. And then I spent about an hour with every player one-on-one, -on -one just learning about them, their family, their goals, you know, what they see this program becoming and what they think it's going to take um, and getting feedback about the highs and the lows of their past. So it's, that's been probably my favorite part. And every coach has been in my office. You know, Izzo has called me four or five times already just to check in, you know, how's recruiting going coach? What do you need? And so 
it's not just the players that I'm getting that with. It's been really, really fun. Has anyone, any of the coaches surprised you? Oh, um, the softball coach, Jackie is just a ball of fun. I mean, she is so energetic and straightforward, which I love. I just want to know what you think or where you stand. And, um, Susie Merchant has been phenomenal. She's very transparent. She's like, if you want to talk coaching, if you want to talk X's and O's, if you want to talk recruiting, let's do it. You know, I, I sat with Mel Tucker. He just landed like two, four or five star recruits right before I came in. So he's in a good mood. Thank God. And I think he usually is, but you know, he's like, ha, you know, want me to introduce you to donors. Do you want to work on fundraising? So I, I wouldn't say it's a surprise. It's just how open door everyone is. You know, there's, it, it's about making everyone better. The entire Spartan community. Yeah. And there's a lot of schools across the country where it might not be that way. Yes. And it seems like, at least from what I've seen at Michigan state, you guys have a family culture just straight yes, up. We do. And it's so fun. I mean, uh, Izzo was mad. I didn't come down and sit on the bench. The very first game I went to, he's like, where were you? You know, or like I was on the floor, I got to throw out t-shirts at the women's game and um, you know, the softball coaches, you know, making fun of my arm or complimenting it. I'm not really sure which <laughs> it is. It is a special place. I mean, that is why this felt good to me. It felt right because I had no reason to leave. I was in a great situation. And so it's, it is, it's special. Well, it's a special place. And obviously you are a special coach for being there. One of the things that I love about you is that you are such a champion for women, you know, empowering them, pushing boundaries, a role model for so many people. And, and I know that's really important to you. How did you figure out that you wanted to be in that role? Um, you know, you don't really realize that that's what you're doing until you start to see and have conversations, whether it's with your athletes, fellow coaches that, you know, navigating those environments that I've been through and have been challenging, you know, I often get the, um, reputation that I'm serious, even though like I'm constantly joking, but I'm a very intense person when it comes to my job and my team and my expectations of those who work with our program, it's very high. And, you know, I think in most cases, that's just a good coach, that I'm a very intense person, right? And so it's those little moments that accumulate over my entire career, you know, hey, where's your head coach? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. I've been here for five years already, right? Those moments that keep happening um, that help me realize, like, I just want to be sure that someone, the players I work with or the, the coaches I work with or any woman or any person who has been marginalized, it's not just women, right? they have a safe space with me to work through that. How do you navigate it? How do you advocate for yourself? What can I do to advocate for you? You know, it's, I'm not, there are so many other people that help champion that cause. I can just only create a ripple where I am. And so that's why it's been so important for me. Well, I want to take a look at your background. You mentioned it, but you came from Illinois state where you took them to four straight NCAA tournaments. What's the most important thing that you took away from your time with them? Oh gosh. I mean, we were super competitive every day in the gym. We had a purpose, but we never lost track of being ourselves. You know, I want every player that steps into our environment to know that they can be uniquely themselves and we can create a team that has an identity with many different personalities or, you know, ways of expressing your excitement or ways of managing your game routine. Um, I think that was where I was able to embrace that at the highest level. And then it's about a process. You know, we put a plan in place and the players were so generous and trusting, which I'm very grateful for. Um, I think they gave me the opportunity to work through some kinks in my coaching approach, but it really is about a process and staying, you know, what is my next best decision? What is the next best step for us? And they were great about it. And I think it's been cool to see them use that in their personal life too. And so I think that's what I would take away. It's given me clarity coming here, just stay in the grind, stay right where you are. What's your next best thing? I recently heard you talk about getting back on the recruiting trail, but you do it a little bit different than others. You like to stay kind of tucked away. What <laughs> is that? I don't know if I'm tucked away. I just can't see anything because there's these giants, you know, volleyball, it's a very tall sport. And then you have so many recruiters at these high profile tournaments and, or parents of, you know, very physical athletes standing around the court and I'm, you know, five, five. So I kind of sneak in and I usually sit by a parent. Sometimes they can't even, they don't even know, you know, I'm a college coach or they're like, Hey, that's reserved for my, you know, my husband or something. I was like, I'll be up in five minutes. Give me five minutes. I just want to watch. 
so yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's different. It's just the only way I can focus. And I'm so easily distracted by conversations. You know, I just love people and, and interacting and catching up because it is a social environment. And if I don't make myself sit, I won't get my job done. And then my, my assistants will be yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned you have two little ones at home. How was the transition for them? Are they excited to come to East Lansing? Yes, they, they are. They're not here yet. Um, we're still transitioning with the school enrollment and daycare and all that. But my son, you know, on our first day here, he they gave him a Sparty doll, a Sparty stuffy, you know, and he hasn't put it down. And they have these mini volleyballs, you know, with Spartan volleyball written on it. And it, they're just so proud. They're certainly sad. You know, we embed ourselves in the community we live in. It is home. And I think that's the only way to do it, to really give to the people giving to you as a coach or a leader. Um, and so my kids are the same. They don't know any different, but they're they're very excited to be here. And my son is now addicted to our basketball programs here. Like nice. he's been to a live game. It was insane, you know, and now he's keeping score. He's asking me what set it is. I got to teach him about halves, you know, <laughs> so it's been great. Growing up around the sport of volleyball, I know you mentioned he's interested in basketball, but do you think they'll play volleyball when they grow up? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's going to be hard not to a little bit just because they're going to be in the gym and around the team. But I, I am it's maybe it's because I've seen the other side. I'm not super pushy about getting my kids into organized sports really early. I want them to try everything. I mean, my son does gymnastics. My daughter's in piano you know, uh, baseball, they do like six week basketball camps. I just, I want them to do everything. Like, I think they'll start theater when they get here. We have a phenomenal fine arts program. And so I'm hoping I can get them into that again. Like I coach what, what is your passion and how can I advocate for you? And if it happens to be sport is part of that, like, let's go, I'm here for it. Well, I mean, it's great to hear about your family and get to know you a little bit more. I know that you're so family centric and us as, you know, the Big Ten, we are so excited to have you in our family. I know Michigan State is pumped to have you in their family. So Coach Leah Johnson, thank you so, so much. And I'm excited to watch you kill it this fall. Thank you. It is my pleasure. And I feel very fortunate to be part of this exceptional coaching family. Thank you.